This is an unrehearsed program. The views expressed are those of the guests and not necessarily those of the producer. Today's topic. Poor countries and their rich dollars in Passiva Truth award winning program. Poor nations are financing much of the United States' current account deficit. Antonio Gracifo, writer of uh, books and a film star, where he is a motivational speaker who imparts a message of empowerment in a variety of languages. His writings have appeared in several newspapers and journals. Welcome you all. You. Starting with you, um, um, Antonio, farmers funnel their money into the United States because it's a great investment. Yes. Um, the problem at home, though, is it's just like the brain drain. We also have a financial drain leaving foreign countries coming into the United States. And I honestly believe that money could do more to help the population at large if it would remain in their home country. What do you uh, future? Prices. That's not right. Well, certainly, that may be case, reason. certainly in the case of China, if we look at the, the history of China, China has repeatedly kept large reserves to the detriment of their current situation. During World War II, Chiang Kai-shek was sending soldiers into, into combat with no weapons, and meanwhile he had many brand new American weapons in storage. He sent soldiers naked to India expecting that, 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 that they would pick up uniforms there. Meanwhile, they had all the supplies they needed in China. So China has historically sacrificed the present for the future uh, to their detriment. No, I think in the case of China, the fact of the matter is trade as well. But Antonio, is a strong economic growth. Do you think it will solve the region's problem? Only if the money is put back into, for example, education and in creating uh, acceptable local jobs. Because I've seen in all through Indochina where I operate as well as in China that one of two situations, either education is not available to the average person or even if they have the education there is no job for them to do that's, that's uh, on the level of that education. I think I agree with him because uh, if you look at uh, South India, uh, especially Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh in the recent years, um, the focus that was uh, given to the education of the children is paying off 20 years later. I see this all through Indochina. You have, you have the children of the poor who, by, by, by some help, by some grace of God, they get an education, they even get a degree. Now what are they supposed to do? There's, they have uh, MBA, but there's nothing to administer. They have IT degrees, but there's no computers to work on. They can't go back to the village and, and, and work in the rice paddies. So what are they supposed to do? And I think even the jobs created in India in the main mm -hmm. cities like Bangalore, Hyderabad, Noida, or Chennai, most of them are like IT coolies. And even India's human resource minister, Mr. Murli Manohar Joshi, a strong Hindu fundamentalist, he said the other day, India is producing good work. There are policy decisions the government can take that don't cost anything. For example, allowing freedom of the press. In many of the countries that we talk about as being developed countries, they have no freedom of the press, which means that the, 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 the person who isn't in school has no access to education. They can't get it on TV, radio, internet, or newspaper because it's all filtered. That is a decision the government could lift that ban tomorrow and it costs nothing. John, you think the, the deteriorating situation is in, in Nepal uh, is giving a wake-up call to the Indian government? As for the Maoist rebels, I mean, living in Cambodia, I mean, I've seen the result of this. You do not have educated, wealthy people strapping bombs in their bodies and running in and, and blowing people up. The person becomes a Maoist when there is no other option. There's nothing. There's no opportunity. The government should be providing opportunities and education for those people. I think I'd like to make a comment on this Nepal situation. It's not how it will affect India. Actually, the uh, level of corruption will bring the government down. Well, the, so, the, 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 man on the, the, the man on the street in the United States doesn't have to deal with corruption the way you yeah. do in a foreign country. I mean, like, when I mail a letter, I know it's going to get there. When I'm in Cambodia, that's not the case. Yeah. You know, I, when the police want to pull me over at 2 o'clock in the morning, I don't run away, which is what I do in Thailand. We're talking about that majority of the world's poor poorest now live in countries with vast international financial reserves. And since these countries are not experiencing any financial disaster and haven't done it for the last... Uh, parity, economic parity among the people, that would help the... Uh, that would address many of the questions, including the corruption issues. Don't you? Yeah, you can't offer a salary of $20 a month and expect to get good quality teachers or, or policemen, so we need to raise the, the salary of the government workers and that will help curb the issues. 
And that's all the time we have. We'll bring you another issue of Passion for Truth next Saturday and Sunday. Thank you for joining us. Thank you all. Thank you.